right. Let's ever see. put on a mask and all of a sudden your face is green and now you're <laughs> running around wearing a Steve Harvey suit? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. We made it back for another episode. This is Live from the Live Room, and I am Jay Rich. So we have two comics on a, on a show today. We have Alicia Bridges coming back one more time, and then we got Jason Zaremba. First things first, what is the uncomfortable truth you would like to share about yourself? Should I go first? Yeah, you break the ice. <laughs> okay. Uncomfortable truth. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uncomfortable truth. I I was roasted very, very, um, it, was, it got very dark very fast for, of all things, because I like subtitles on everything I, I like to watch. I didn't know that was a thing, a trigger point for some people, but I got, I got shamed. I got sub- subtitle shamed. <laughs> it's weird because I feel like uh, like in the past like couple years everyone that I've talked to like needs subtitles now like mm-hmm. I'm not against it but like it wasn't till like I think probably like a year ago or so like now like everyone I know watches shit with subtitles on it's because of different languages or no just like they're just like how can we put on the closed captioning they're probably getting old and so they can't hear like Possibly, they yeah. <laughs> your, your late 20s are a real... Uh, <laughs> your hearing changes. Yeah. 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 What, okay, um, to branch off that, what song lyric do you, did you always, did you remember, misremember? Oh, I always get song lyrics wrong. Yeah. Um, dang, I just had a moment the other day, but now I can't think of the song. But I always do it, say wrong words. I can't think right now. I had... Um, Last year, like I mentioned, uh, well, like before we were recording, I guess that like I had to like go home for like some time last year, and I was like we were listening to some Elton John and uh, Tiny Dancer. We were listening to that, mm-hmm. and uh, my mom like during the chorus, it got to that "Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer," and she was like, "What's the word there?" And I was like, "It's Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer." She was like, "Oh, I thought it was You Are Just a Tiny Dancer," and I'm like, "Mom, you've been <laughs> like you've been listening to the song for like forty years." <laughs> But if you remember like, the wrong thing, you lock it yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. It's like so we like you can go that long like mm-hmm. thinking the wrong thing. Yeah, if nobody Absolutely. corrects it. Yeah. I mean, I think um, of the wrong lyrics all the time, but for the longest, I thought Gucci Man's song "Is You Rolling" was talking about going somewhere. I had no <laughs> idea. Bruh. I had no idea they were talking about drugs. Really? I swear to God, That's I funny. really thought I was like, "Is you rolling?" Like, That's yes, funny. I might go. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. That is that's funny. That's funny. So yeah. All right. That's that is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> just hearing hearing like people talk about doing acid. Like I don't know why they keep falling over shit. They're just talking about tripping. What's with their balance? <laughs> that, like no, mushroom, for real. You know, like yeah. oh, that means acid. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning something. You know, it's crazy. Did you get shamed at the table when um or whatever room you're in? When what? When you learned what what. The topic. Oh yeah, I always get shamed. I think I literally learned that in my mid twenties. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I I got so many different stories with that, but honestly, the the reason why I started with closed caption is because, um, my mom had like the TV with all the all the good channels, and on her off day, I would would like to watch certain things, but I had to be quiet because you wake up mom on her off day, you liable to get hit with something. Mm-hmm. So closed caption volume very low, and that's. It kind of became a muscle memory. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's that. See, that's interesting. That's better than I'm just getting old and I can't hear the same anymore. No, yeah, I got honest so. from twelve. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, like not in like music, but like in movies. I think I was recently watching like one of the Harry Potter movies, and mm-hmm. like I had closed captioning on for some reason. But I was like, oh, okay, that's the word they said there. Like, right, and because of the accent, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I guess that's just a word they have. Over. Like, yeah, you know, and understand what they're saying. What shows have you guys been watching lately? Um, True Story, um, Rhythm and Rhyme, Rhythm which and is, rhyme. that is a rap hip-hop contest. Is that the one with Jaden? Uh, no, it's Chance the Rapper, okay, Cardi right. B. Oh, the con- okay, yeah, yeah, I know what's Yeah, about. randomly, because that came out like two years ago. You got me watching, um, what was it, Explained? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got me I watching I love that, that show. That's, That's that documentary show. series. Yeah, and they do yeah. 20 yeah. minutes of a random topic. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I lost a couple couple uh, hours on that yeah and then it was I, but i love i love psychology so yeah, anything too. like any type of deep dive that eats me right up Thanks. what about you um shows i um 
Well, Seinfeld's on Netflix now. Yes, yeah. I've been yep. watching it. So I've been watching it nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, I work from home, so like I have the TV on like in the background. So it's been like Seinfeld. I just started rewatching. Uh, you ever watched The Americans? No. It's on Amazon Prime. It's um, about like Soviet spies, like during the Reagan era, mm-hmm. that are like you know like they're just living as like a regular suburban family, but like they're actually like. Um, spies for like the USSR. Oh, it's I very watched good. the first episode of that. I couldn't get into oh, it, but I probably just wasn't paying attention. Is that like uh, the the series? The what was it Lemon Time series? Um, the one with uh, Robert Nero? Or I'm sorry, Al Pacino. With about the KGB well, uh, spies. I've heard um, of um, the sleeper agent uh, cell agents. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the Americans gave refuge to um, to some German soldiers and scientists after World War Two. Operation Paperclip. That's what yeah. it was. Was it, it sim- similar to that? No. Um, well, that was... Uh, well, Operation Paperclip was, like, us uh, working with, like, Nazis. This was, like... These are, like, Soviet spies that um, uh, aren't, like... They're working against the U.S. government. Okay, they're so they're, against. like, living here undercover. Yeah. And, like, the twist it on it is that they're, like... Neighbor that just moved into the neighborhood works in uh, counterintelligence with the FBI. Okay. Um... Not my kink, so I would probably <laughs> never watch a full season. But I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, it's good. It's <laughs> really interesting to look at, too, because, um, like, it takes place during the Reagan era, and, like, Oliver North, mm-hmm. who was, like, the like the center of the Iran-Contra scandal, he actually, I think he wrote a couple episodes. Oh, really? So, yeah, so it's interesting to, like, look at it through that perspective. It's cool. So, um, I th- another callback to an old conversation you were having, um, do you guys rather, would you rather binge watch an uh, episode or show or season or something, or do you guys miss the weekly appointment TV? 1,000% binge watch for me. Everything? Everything. Okay. I do not want to have to wait. I get so anxious. Matter of fact, sometimes I will not watch a show like Snowfall. So build up. Yep. I just will wait <laughs> till it's over and I can see all the episodes. But, but <laughs> even with that, you have to avoid everything on the internet that involves Facts. it. So you got to s- scroll right past it or something? Mm-hmm. Luckily, I have weed memory, so I <laughs> that's good. That's look at stuff good. and it floats away. Yeah, I no the longer remember it. The number of movies that I've watched for the first time multiple times, <laughs> y'all! Like I swear like, to God, it's like fifty first dates with movies. With yeah, me. like I Seriously? never, ser- I never remember. Yeah, this is I like can, the, this is a great ad for weed. I, no, for real. Like so I, an, ad, an ad for weed? Or like, um, yeah. childhood trauma. You know? Do you want to be surprised when you find out Darth Vader is Luke's father? Yeah. You should roll up. <laughs> Call back. Is you rolling? Is Bitch, you I rolling? Is you rolling? <laughs> Bitch, I might be. I remember stuff in very high levels. I realized this about myself. So I can tell you a general premise of a movie, but mm-hmm. I couldn't tell mm-hmm. you specific parts. I don't remember that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, weekly binge or, uh, I'm sorry, weekly appointment TV or a binge? Um, it depends on the show, really, because, like, a lot of the Netflix shows and, like, those, which, like, I don't really watch that many shows. I'm more of a movie person. Okay. But, like, a lot of the Netflix shows are designed to be binge watched. Mm-hmm. So, like, I tried this, um, like, uh, like with like Orange is the New Black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, like, the, I don't think it was the last, it was, like, a couple seasons ago when, like, I decided I was like, all right, this season I'm just going to watch like one a week. And after like the first two episodes, I just stopped watching because like you lose, um, like I just like lost interest. I wasn't like watching it on the couch all at the same time. Sounds okay. like dating, you know. You know? As- oh, event- uh, essentially, yeah. yeah. It, it <laughs> always me reminds me device. of that. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going through my Netflix, I'm like, mm-hmm. no, that's not a good n- good enough. Oh, let me watch the previews. No, let me skip to something else. I'm like, wow. this is dating. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I like that. It's fun, genius. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I don't know. What about what about people that do like maybe one two episodes per release? Like I think um, I think Disney kind of did it with uh, their new Hawkeye release. Mm-hmm. Um, they did like gave two episodes the first week or something. Mm-hmm. What, what, what you think that's a better? I would just rather watch all of them have the the ability. Yeah, give me the whole season. But you adjust. You know, we used to not have that luxury. Right, right, right. And we just had to deal with it weekly. I think as we grow as a society and stuff changes and gets better, we get more spoiled. We have no patience Mm -hmm. whatsoever. Well, that's that's another thing, too. Like, you have, um, you know, something 
like say it's dramatic, right? Mm-hmm. It takes maybe a year and a half, two years to get it done, and then we are done with it within a, a few weeks or a good day. Um, mm-hmm. And then you were begging for another season or another episode. Of Facts. That that's go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, a lot of, like, because, like, the Netflix series that are designed to be binge-watched, uh, because it isn't, like, week by week, it'll be like, all right, cool, a uh, new season of, like, Big Mouth is mm-hmm. out, and then you watch it all in a day, and then it's totally like, all that. right, I just got to wait a year and a half. Right, fast. So it's kind of like, when do you want the, like, the patience, off. like, do you want it, like spread out, or do you want to be spending, like, the entire next year, like, I gotta find out what happened to... And by that time, you probably forget, maybe, or may not even necessarily be as invested anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, do people... Well, well, you. I guess you kind of have to get the reminder, like, oh, they got a new season out? Is it... Yeah. Does that happen to it you depends. guys? Like? I mean, it depends on the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Like, Black Mirror is really popular. Mm-hmm. Uh... American Horror Story. No, they oh, don't. American Horror up. Story. Yeah. Like, threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I always see those uh, things pop up. Like somebody knows it's about to come out, and that's kind of a reminder. Oh my gosh, let mm-hmm. me watch the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's yeah. kind of interesting because, like, um, if you're like on Facebook, like we were talking about, like how you like you got to avoid spoilers and shit. Yeah. But if you're in like a Facebook group for like a certain show or something, yeah. when like the new shit is coming out is like everyone's posting about it. Okay. And right. so, so you're just kind of like, all right, it drops today. Like, I mean, I'm in like, so I mean, at least eight or commercial. Seinfeld. I, I'm yeah. in like at least eight or seven, like Seinfeld groups on Facebook. And when that was coming to Netflix, it was just like a different meme every day about <laughs> it coming to Netflix. And okay. Um, next I want to shift into, there's a concept that I kind of been floating around in my head. And I, I, I guess I've landed on calling it the, the comics curse. Um, and what I mean by th- what I mean by that is basically when comedians are doing something serious or they try to take a shift from comedy mm-hmm. and it, they have this problem with people taking them serious. Yeah. Um, Kevin's like, he's, he's taking hard shifts and I think true story is probably like one of his more dramatic roles, but in even his promo runs, he's been talking about, he baby stepped everyone as far as seeing him in a different light versus being the over the top exuberant comedian. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Different. I think every single comedian that's had like their run on top, they've all struggled with it. Um, Jim Carrey, Eddie Murphy. I was just talking to somebody about that fact. What what you what you guys get into? Um, well, we were talking about Jim Carrey. We started off talking about Kevin Hart, then we were talking about Jim Carrey, and I said that it was very hard for me to take Jim Carrey um, serious. serious. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned um, Twenty Three. It was another movie. I haven't seen it, but it was like this science fiction movie where he had this girlfriend. It's and Eternal they, Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That. Is it good? It's Charlie Kaufman who wrote it, and I don't know if he directed it, but he is my favorite writer. It's very okay. good. Okay. Yeah. I want to watch it. Anyways, mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. a science fiction movie where this couple break up and they're trying to erase their memory of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's supposed to be serious. And then... The one where he uh, did the biopic as the comedian. Andy Kaufman? Mm-hmm. Yes, Man on the Moon. Man on the Moon. Yeah. Which I need to watch that documentary because it looks very that good. That documentary is so interesting. Yeah. like it He looks... is so full of himself. It's hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was very hard to see him going from like the mask, liar, liar, mm-hmm. to that kind of stuff. Like, Did you watch uh, Truman Show? Yeah. How'd you feel about that? Okay. Oh my gosh, we brought that up. Okay. So they said that that was serious. That was a serious role for him. Mm -hmm. But I guess it was hard for me to comprehend it as a serious role because everything around him was so goofy to me. Really? Yeah. That was still. It was borderline, but to me, it was. It was like bright enough, and I guess people were so animated, like over the top animated. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But but okay, well I would counter that by saying like say. Um, Kevin Hart's role in right the Wedding Ringer and what's the um the upside where he was oh uh, the assistant? one with uh, Brian Cranston yes yes I think that's like a baby step in towards like hey I can be serious but same time mm-hmm. I have my comedic elements about me as well yeah um do you think you have to like slow walk somebody to the no- another part of your um personality one person you didn't mention I don't think was Jamie Fox yes yes you did? but and yeah, Eddie so, Murphy they, well, yeah, they Eddie. did both of them transitioned beautifully. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was about their transition. Maybe it's Jamie because... Jamie spoke on his. Maybe because 
in our age group, uh, maybe we came in towards the more serious part of their career. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but they were well, What would you say Eddie made his transition from um, Pure Comedy? Dr. Doolittle. Yeah? That is a very... I cry, man. Every time. Every that time. That's a goofy movie, movie yeah. to me, though. It's fucking serious, bro. <laughs> you hear an animal talk, you, you smoke the right amount of weed, oh and a bear gosh, time. Oh, so it's the, oh okay, so if I didn't have a... It's a serious... That is a dark drama, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. But right about weed. If I didn't do <laughs> weed, if I did weed, I could probably agree with that. That's what they did, like a like a reimagining or whatever of Doctor Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr. But it was still like a family comedy. Yeah. They should have done one that was like a dark psychological thriller about this guy that can talk to animals. It'd be like all the deers that get hit in the road. <laughs> all that the road would kill. actually be a good. They call, cool. they call it road kill. <laughs> yeah. <bro>. Your <laughs> oh. face though. <laughs> so, oh. Well, bro, um, <laughs> have you ever seen The Voices? No. That's another movie that, like, has... It's kind of a dark comedy. I want to see it's your mind list Reynolds. on Netflix for some reason. Yeah, I do, too. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> like, like, send me a screenshot of that. It's yeah. like, this song, yeah. yeah, you got good taste. Oh, I, I can recommend, like, a thousand... Like, I've... Because, like, like, I do those polls on Instagram, and, like, uh, people will, like, ask... Me, like, so, well, people. Like, two or three people have, like, asked me, like, what if you run out of movies? And it's like, bro, I've seen, like, thousands of movies. I can just keep going for, like, years. Yeah. <laughs> like... I don't. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's a good thing. It means I haven't lived a day in my life. But I think that <laughs> it's just kind of like, well, yeah, this is uh, what I spent my life doing. So that's dope, though. So, oh, going back to um, Jamie Foxx, he actually spoke on it. He said, from his comedic transition to like more serious roles, he says um, he was a nobody in white Hollywood, um, and the black community knew him from like the the more. The Jamie Foxx show, even though it did cross over, it wasn't as big as uh, what Fresh Martin, Prince and Martin. Fresh, yeah, um, and Which then is, it was a very good show. Yeah, you're right, right, mm-hmm. right. Um, and actually, what made me think about the show, well, actually, that question was a piece I saw on um, the guy that played um, Braxton, mm-hmm. uh, Christopher Duncan. Mm-hmm. He was talking about how he wanted to uh, do more serious stuff, but nobody would take him serious mm-hmm. because they knew him. Uh, they get typecasted, right? Um, and now you know that led me to the more like more of the, the comedic curse that we were talking about. Um, with Jamie, he said um, he. What was the movie? He, uh, Booty Call with uh, mm-hmm. Vivica Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that kind of like put him in a box and typecast it in the black community, would, whereas he was a stranger in the white community. So he said that actually his his not his the lack of success in, in crossing over actually helped him mm. in that okay. regard. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, in regards to Kevin Hart, the person that I was talking to on yesterday said that. In order for Kevin Hart to be taken serious fully, he's going to do some type of biopic. Because mm-hmm. all the comedians that have transitioned have a biopic. He's got to gain some height, I think, to be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. So Jamie Foxx with oh, Ray. So you give him, you give him a Bow Wow disease? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, want, I, I wonder if him and Cat Williams are the same height. Because I'm just like, those are two guys. That That's I know actually a good I've question. I've met Kevin Hart before. I used to work in radio, yeah. and he is... Like I'm tall, but mm-hmm. I literally could see the top of his head. <laughs> well, he's like, like what five four five five, right? Yeah, he's short. And how tall is Cat? Um, I don't know. Probably. Okay, that's another thing five, that's gonna be three, in my five, Google. Yeah, probably. Um, so so with the biopic, right? Would you say loosely the true story is kind of a similar? No. 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 Who's the? the I biopic mean, well, well, think for? about it. well, think about it. He's from the the character is from Philly. They is call it him the kid. To be him? Well, I guess it's the believability. So I think the creative process, are you guys aware of like the, the extortion scheme that, that happened with him? I briefly seen that? somebody yeah. say, um, yeah. write wow. a status about it because they were like, I the, can't the believe sex tape. It's he from did. The sex tape. Oh, okay. Kevin Hart's got a sex tape? Yeah, well, the sex tape. Oh, yeah, well, he got like, called cheat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So but you the tape that. is still out there. I guess. Oh, All right. right. I know what I'm Googling when I get home. <laughs> it was like, you couldn't see him having sex, but it was like you seen him with the girl on the bed. After sex. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was like the cleanup. Man. Yeah. That's very disappointing. When you say cleanup, you mean go get the rag in the, in the water? Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Dehydrated. He'll wipe stuff up, kid. <laughs> um, you just hear him off camera say, sorry, and then you see him grab a rag, and that's the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you gotta but, fill in the blanks. It's kinda like how you don't see the shark in Jaws until the end of the movie. You know, you gotta kinda build up. like let yeah, the wait ninety minutes for ba- for ba- for the first Batman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um so so the extortion scheme was basically his friend um 
had the tape and was trying to extort money from him. That's who needs enemies when you have friends like that. Exactly. Why does your friend have a tape of? <laughs> well, it was a guy. It was a guy who was in his, the, his crew. It, in his so crew. I guess he oh, set him up with okay. that woman and put the camera Possible. in the room. Ooh, mm-hmm. Man, talk about spies. That is Possible, some fucking yeah. FBI, CIA yeah. kind of shit. I mean, but uh, that also can lead to like, I'm not necessarily a, a sympathizer of um, all celebrities. But I can see the paranoia, how it develops. Mm-hmm. When you talk about being on, when, there's one thing we're having, being in front of the camera versus being behind the camera. And you have all the lights and you're talking about walking out of a dark room and then you come outside and that right there, you can see how that could drive a person crazy. And the inability to have a conversation with a person as a human being because you always trying to figure out what they want from you. I could see where the paranoia can come from and how you can get trapped by your success. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to the, the true story movie, or I guess limited series, it was like they, his character was from Philly. He was a hometown hero. Um, he never used his name. He was always referred to as the kid. Um, and then with the extortion scheme that took place in the, in a, in a movie or a serious series, whatever you call it, I, I could see, I could see the parallels in his life. Do a biopic a- does not count if you're playing yourself. <laughs> oh, you talking not... about just him doing like like Jamie Foxx doing Ray, right? Or okay. like Will Smith uh, doing yeah. Ali, okay. or like yeah. I mean, it has to be somebody else. But Jim Carrey doing um, Andy Cohen, yeah, okay, like that. Hmm. That's an interesting take. Okay, yeah. that's who like, would he that's play? Like, that's like Saturday Night Live had making people working guys. Yeah, where, who would Kevin Hart play? In a I said game. James Baldwin. That oh Whoa. man, a James Baldwin yeah. movie would be killer. Yeah. That would be intense. That would be yeah. amazing. Even watching his in, his old interviews is very intense. Yeah. And the struggles of um we cuz we well, well how do you guys feel about the LGBT community struggle now? Do you think it's it's oversaturated or I'm sorry, not oversaturated, but not like it's overblown, a blown out of proportion or do you think they're having they have a lot more well obviously they have more, a lot more freedom, but do you think who you think had it harder? Some people, a gay person in the 60s versus a gay person now? Gay person in the 60s. Gay person for in the 60s. Sure. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. Because it was illegal to be gay. Yeah. Basically. Like, against the law. Yeah. So, they would so have, the, like, a they would have like a cop basically just, like, go to a bar and, like, and hit gay on Gay patrol. Guy. Hey. Yeah. You look like, gay? Yeah. They would have, like, a, they would have that. cops go to bars and just, like, find a guy that they think might be gay, like, seduce him, be like, hey, you want to go back to my 1960s apartment or whatever? <laughs> and then, like, once they, like, you know, get them to be like, yeah, let's go have gay sex, they'd be like, Bruh. all right, you're under arrest. That is a skit. Which, that is funny what? as especially if, you can, especially if you consider, like, you like, he doesn't even go say have you're under sex. arrest. He just pulls out the cuffs. And, and the you think like, you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. And he's like, no, you're actually under arrest. I'm like, I get it. Hands behind man. your back. Okay, <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that's you funny. have the right jokes. to remain silent. Yeah, but you I call won't. Me daddy? <laughs> yeah, got the right to remain silent, but I won't. <laughs> but that's hilarious. That'd be so funny. You're getting arrested, <laughs> thinking it's some kind of role play. You're like in what? a jail cell. You're like, man, the production value that they put. They hired these actors to act like drunks. That's funny. That that's intense, but. <laughs> But like going back to James Baldwin and he, he you know talking about um his his intensity it's like it's like he had a uh, duality um I don't even say duality it's just more of a a struggle like say you you have something that you encounter as a white man me as a black man and then you as a black woman and then you have the intersection of like different struggles right mm-hmm. um for him and I think a lot of people like him to have like to cause it their actual lifestyle mm-hmm. and then the struggles of racism mm-hmm. on top of it mm-hmm. um that was very very intense and it came it came across very strongly in all the interviews i watch of him mm-hmm. um i forgot the question we were talking about well it's interesting too because like him being gay actually isolated him from like like I th- like martin luther king kind of stopped associating with him when like it became like public uh, knowledge that James Baldwin was gay. Yeah. So like, uh, you had like that angle of it too. And uh, what it is interesting, I feel like, I mean, I do think it was like worse for like a uh, LGBT or whatever. But I think that the uh, there's different struggles now as opposed to back then. Mm-hmm. Like this definitely is like nowhere as like 
uh, bad as like getting arrested. And right, shit. right, right. But like, With a I, nuan- think I guess I'm trying like to find the nuance of the struggle. Yeah, it feels like there's uh, there's got to be some kind of pressure to like, uh, especially for like a lot of gay like comedians and gay actors. It seems like there's like, all right, you got to be like at the head of the parade and all this shit. Todd yeah. Glass, like I think, right. is like the best example of this. Where like he's gay, but he doesn't really like make it his thing. Like, if you watch an hour of him, he's not going to talk about, yeah, my husband and everything. Like, mm-hmm. he just talks like... Um, a person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, and then he even, like, pointed that out where um, people talk about, like, oh, men and women are different and all this stuff and, like, uh, uh, like relationships and everything. And he said, like, for 20 years, I basically ran an experiment where I talked about my same-sex couple saying it was a straight couple and people all over the country were like, that's just like us, you know? Mm-hmm. So he yeah. kind of, like, tricked people. And so he played the long game, essentially. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like that. Um, so so another, another, another person like that, or another situation like that is, like, um, uh, Kevin you, Hart. No, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. So he oh, was yeah. a ladies' man uh, mm-hmm. for How I Met Your Mother, and then the moment he came out gay, he, he basically has to play a person... That's either gay or mm-hmm. just uh, something that's like uh, some sort of pocket of personality. We can't look him as the same man's man. So they get typecast yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that I I think it's uh, one of the <laughs> few good parts of the Harold and Kumar Christmas movie. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm-hmm. Well, like in the first two like Harold and Kumar movies, they, like you know, it, it was before his he had that comeback. Mm-hmm. And so, like, his character, where he was playing Neil Patrick Harris, but he was, like, a womanizer and, like, all into, like, drugs and all this shit. And so then, like, in between the second movie and the Harold and Kumar Christmas movie, he yeah. came out of the closet. Okay. And so, in, like, the third movie, they had it that, like, him being gay was just a front. And the guy that he says is his husband is actually his drug dealer. And he's, That's like, great. It, like, yeah, it was That's very really funny, funny the way he did that, yeah. But why is uh, it called coming out the closet? Like, why is that deemed the phrase? I don't know, because, like, <laughs> if you ever, I mean, what, why do you say, like, say, maybe it's another thing for explain to have, have an episode on. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, like, the closet. Oh, the closet. <laughs> but, like, you know, uh, skeletons in the closet or, like, uh, bones okay. in the backyard yeah. or something like that. I guess okay. just to turn the phrase, like, I don't know, it's something that Wikipedia like, yeah, like get, get, get from me. I'm like, was it a gay man oh. hiding in the closet one day? And he's like, okay, y'all, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, yeah, we're going to go to what well, Trapped in the Closet with R. Kelly. But <laughs> that's There's the Springsteen lyric, uh, windows are for cheaters, chimneys for the poor, closets are for hangers, winners use the door. So Winners mm-hmm. use the door? Yeah. Were you? Were, okay, I'm, I'm not going to say that. What, uh, <laughs> what song was Ooh, that? what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to do another Wii reference, but it wasn't as funny as my uh, head. It was my head. Right. My filter, I kind of my joke filter kind of goes through the head first, and then it's like, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> oh yeah, when that, I hate when that happens, especially when like you're on stage, yeah, and you're like you, you're like riffing, and you think of something funny, and you're like, this will be good, and then like right before it gets to your mouth, like, like nah. your rational thought is like, don't say that in public, like, yep. back up, <laughs> yep, yep, because well, I I did I actually did some sort of a little bit about that, like uh, my fear of clipboards, and it all stemmed from. I used to go to, um, I used to service like a, a psych ward mm-hmm. and I would talk to different people um, that like, that work the floor and they gave me like a list of questions they would have to, you know, ask a person before they get admitted mm-hmm. in certain situations. And mm-hmm. honestly, if you catch the most logical person on a bad day, we're like two or three bad answers away from being, you know, put in that room. Mm-hmm. Oh, <clears throat> I 1000% believe it. Yeah. For sure. And it's just like so weird, but it's like because we throw the label of crazy on different people. We we like to label things, mm-hmm. yeah. and and the thing about that is like it's so it's we are so apathetic as a people until it happens to us or someone yeah. we know. I think we label it as crazy because there's not enough people being vulnerable enough to say me too. Yeah, yeah, people aren't honest. No, about their at own all. Shit. And um, I actually was just having a conversation with one of my friends last night because she's crazy as hell. (laughs) And I say that to her face all the time. Yeah. But um, some stuff that she was telling me in that moment, I was like, wow, I feel really honored that you trust me enough Mm -hmm. to share that, you crazy ass lady. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Don't tell anyone else. (laughs) That's a real thing. Thank you. (laughs) Absolutely. seriously, to... 
share, you know, your, your, your craziness and yes. the things that your impulsivity and what you've done. And I don't have that type of energy. So it's not like you're sharing it because you'll think I agree or you think I do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it really was an honor for her to share that and feel comfortable because what she was sharing, most people would not have. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. What was it? Share it for everyone. No, what... because she would have a fit. Even if I don't okay. say her name, she mm-hmm. would have a fit. Okay. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> right. um, yeah. Comedian, I want to go back to um, uh, something earlier we were talking about. Um, where I guess like, uh, oh, the dis- uh, disassociation like Martin Luther King you know, from uh, mm-hmm. James Baldwin, right? Yeah. So as comedians, you guys have a numerous amount of contacts and I'm, I'm guessing friends in the industry. Have you ever had a situation where your your comedic friends are beefing and you kind of felt like a kid in divorce? Um, kind of. What's your what's your tactic way of handling? I'm always going to be the neutral party, and my advice is always going to be, "Why don't you talk to them about this?" Mm-hmm. Unless it's com- unless there's like an obvious wrong or right, 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 but like right. in for in most situations, like what do you think about this? Is like I plead the fifth. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna get in the middle of this. So, case in point, I guess uh, Michael, Michael Che, and uh, Tim Dillon. Are you guys aware of that? Mm-mm. So, Michael I, Che, I believe they would have beef. That would make sense. How so? Oh, it was just like I mean, Michael Che is like he's like head writer for like SNL, and mm-hmm. I feel like Tim Dillon like shits on SNL all the fucking time. And that's what it started from. Yeah, yeah, and and basically he called. What? Well, he's successful in what he does now, mm-hmm. but he's basically like most sports analysts. They're failed athletes. Um, mm-hmm. they, I'm not saying he's, well, I guess you could Michael say. Michael Che or Tim Dillon? Tim Dillon. Okay, yeah. So he was trying to do essentially what Michael Che was, has, is doing, mm-hmm. and he didn't find his niche there. He found his, his success in another avenue, mm-hmm. but he's critiquing what Michael Che does, and essentially that was the return fire. But it turned into a whole Twitter beef. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So people that have uh, relationships with both parties, it's like, what, what side do you fall on? First of all, I'm not going to get involved in no Twitter beef. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, period. <laughs> yeah. So, it that's not even personable to me. Mm-hmm. Like, but but it could it could it could it could hinder your jobs going forward. And being based on affiliation, yeah, being neutral on it also too, because um, there was this like um, recently, like with like the political like YouTube like commentary, um, there was this beef between like uh, the Young Turks and this guy Jimmy Dore, and like it was like a beef where like. It, doesn't matter, but one guy that I like a lot, uh, Kyle Kalinske, he, like, released a video stating his thoughts on it because, like, he knows both of them, so, like, people wanted to hear what he had to say. Mm -hmm. And he basically, he didn't play, like, I'm neutral, like, out of any sort of, like, oh, I just don't want to pick sides, but he just stated his thoughts where he's like, I see their point and I see their point, and now, like, both sides just hate him. And that's American politics now. Essentially. Because it's like we have to... Either go all the way to this side, this mm-hmm. side, or all the way to this side. Have you ever guys, have you guys watch a uh, Vice or stuff like that? Mm, but the channel. Um. Well, they do the, a lot uh, of these the shorts. News, uh, organiza- um, like the, website. Well, I've they do these. They do these it. shorts where they do like these social experiments. Where basically, like you know how we have these personality tests. Like when you um go to like a job fair or like um a personality test and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like one to five and you know, how, how strong you feel and stuff like that. So they start everyone out, they line a group of people up in the middle at zero and then they'll present a question and have everyone walk their separate ways. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what our news is basically making us do. Mm-hmm. Um, where you go all the way left, all the way right and then people in the middle are basically get disregarded as like being too pacifist mm-hmm. or, or did, you don't belong to a tribe. Yeah. So you basically get excommunicated. I feel like that all the time. Yeah. And I've definitely felt that way in the last year with COVID, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, so. I've always leaned more left, and I don't know if it's age. Not that I'm all the way right by any means, mm-hmm. but sometimes when I watch CNN, I'm just like, now come on. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. the the passive aggressiveness in mm-hmm. their storytelling. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just disgusting He's, That's to what me he and I were talking about before you, we, before you got here. I, we were talking about how... The news used to be the news where they just gave you the facts and it mm-hmm. allowed the people to make their uh, opinions now on where they felt. extremely passive aggressive. And then, very. Yeah. And I don't think it's that passive anymore. Well, yeah, it's just straight up aggressive. And like, it yeah. used to be, you know, Walter Cronkite and just like the, the news, what this is the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then like what happened was uh, Matt Taibbi wrote a good book about this called Hate Inc. 
where he talks about like part of the reason that the news was so unified back then was because we were in the Cold War and so everything was against the Soviet Union. The oh, we had a common enemy. Com- like com- enemy. Then, yeah. yeah, and so then once uh, the end of the Cold War hit. All of these news outlets were like, well, we need them to hate someone. Okay, you're a Democrat, you hate Republicans. You're a Republican, you hate Democrats. Well, I think that it's human nature to be prejudiced and to pick sides. We do it yes. in every area mm-hmm. of life. We do it from Age, color, race family. to yeah. gender to sports mm-hmm. to states to schools. Mm-hmm. We just find some way how to separate ourselves. Now, not every way is detrimental to society, but I do feel like a lot of how we move is rooted in that. Yeah. Well, and and how much of that is manufactured, though? Right. Like, how much of that is, like, because, like, how much of a, like, a conservative's hatred for Democrats comes from their actual views and how much of it comes from they just watch Tucker Carlson? Because, like, you have... Um, when you look at like independent polling on like ish- on certain issues and everything, people tend to be agreeable on certain yes. things, you know, yes. like um, with all of these strikes that are going on like mm-hmm. uh, across the country. Uh, like I think it was like seventy something percent like Republicans and Democrats support striking workers, and it's because like it's when it comes to policy, a lot of people agree, but then it's the culture war where they're like, all right, talk about cancel culture, talk about Dr. Seuss. Not like, man, you just opened a can of worms getting me to talk about politics. But, <laughs> but like, the perfect example is the Dr. Seuss, uh, because, like, uh, at that time, it was the, I forgot the name of the bill, but the COVID relief bill was uh, being passed in the Senate. And that was when Fox News was talking about Dr. Seuss. And what happened was zero Republican senators <laughs> voted for a bill that had between like 70 and 85 percent approval in, from the American public at large. And so to distract like people on the right from the fact that, hey, your leaders don't care about you at all, they were like, oh, the left is coming after. They're, they're cutting the dick off Mr. Potato Head. What are we going to do? Like, so that they just they change the conversation when it's not going the way so they want to. And Democrats do this essentially too. Essentially, they do. Because I watch him. Fox just mm-hmm. to see. Yeah, me too. Like what they're talking about, and if it's if it's something in the news where it's not necessarily going the Republicans' way, or mm-hmm. it's tricky, they will not talk about it. Yeah, it's interesting how that works. Mm-hmm. Well, I was just talking to someone the other day, and we were talking about statistics, and you know, there's a famous Jay Z line he ran with all off of a number number of years. He was talking about um, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, right? Um, but but I I find that to be um, that's not true anymore because whatever argument that you're trying to present, you can go find a stat to support your argument. I took the mm-hmm. statistics manipulate the numbers. class, yeah, and I learned a lot from that class. The fact that surveys can be manipulated in a bi- uh, a biased way. Yes. Mm-hmm. So unless you know exactly their process and getting those answers, mm-hmm. you don't know whether or not what they're presenting is biased or not. What I hate is when people get on Facebook and we're talking about a topic, and they're like, well, I know three people who, bruh, it's seven <laughs> million people yeah. in the world, mm-hmm. and you basing mm-hmm. your thoughts off the three knucklehead people that you have in your life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. That that goes back to the bubbles, and we were, we were talking about algorithms earlier. It's like, mm-hmm. if you like a certain amount of memes or from a You'll whatever start things, seeing that. Mm-hmm. yes, all you see. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I, I got to the point where I was like, damn, did I lose friends? Because I actually had to look up friends that I know or follow. Like, mm-hmm. I never see them anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because they're the the how infrequent they post, or if they're things that don't. Um, I guess the way the algorithm shifts things mm-hmm. based on opinion or um, li- like how liberal or how conservative a person is, you won't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been watching a lot of social media documentaries, and social media is def- definitely manipulative. Mm-hmm. And so they set it up that way. They set it up for you to see certain things, so it triggers you to argue, mm-hmm. to fuss. Um, because they know that that's what's going to keep people engaged. So it's really interesting how that works. Mm-hmm. All of that is a science, yeah. all of it, to keep you hooked. And it's another case where it's manufactured from people at the top. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we, they, And they also convince us that this is the natural state of things. Like they convince us like, 
Well, I guess, you know, P- the Re- Republicans and Democrats, I guess they just hate each other. But mm-hmm. it's like, no, if you actually talk about the issues, like I know people that are Republicans, and when we talk about politics, we'll agree on like certain things. Even like p- conversations I have with uh, people on the left that like I agree with on issues or something, it's like, we agree on more than we disagree. Mm-hmm. But That's most the people, disagreement yeah. is where the profit is. Like, right. That's yeah. you know, where the money is. Facts. You know? yeah. And as long as they can, I mean, uh, the fact that there was a study and uh, Princeton did, um, they looked at legislation over the past uh, 30 years with like thousands of pieces that were like passed through Congress. And um, they found that public opinion had statistically zero influence on policy. And the only place where you saw any sort of nudge, like if a piece of legislation was introduced in the House or the Senate, there was a 30% chance of it getting passed, whether it had 0% support or 100% support. So like where they found that there was actually a correlation was with the top 5%. And the reason that the top 5% is like a statistic that stands out is because only 5% of the country gives to political campaigns. Mm. And so basically follow the money. Yeah, and of those 5%, less than one half of 1% give the maximum donation. So and so the more and like the more you <laughs> unravel this, uh, the, the um, campaign finance is where I think you really see the answers. Because like you look at, um, I don't know what the numbers were for twenty twenty, but in twenty eighteen it was like two point eight billion dollars was raised for the midterm elections, and uh, like one and a half billion of that came from super PACs, and sixty percent of super PAC money comes from one hundred and thirty two people. Hmm. And so those are the people That's that... That's crazy. The, and it was yeah. $2.8 billion raised? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that's just and that's just super PACs. That's not even counting the individual campaign contributions from these super rich people. Can't relate. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I want to talk about well profits. So mm-hmm. shifting gears a little bit right there. Um, there's a tech company called Promobot. Have you guys heard the story where they are offering $200,000 to a person, uh, I think above 25, um, for their likeness and their voice for, their, for the robot? Yeah, I did read that. What's your number? How do we apply? Oh, so both, both of you want. Yeah, I would uh, you said You said $25,000. i will do it for $200 at this point. I'll like, do it for a gift card to Arby's, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. They're like, what's up? I'll do it if you just pay my electricity bill this month. I'll do oh it for God. You. you. Here's my soul, like <laughs> my bro. Soul. Illuminati, he's ready. It's cold, <laughs> man. I think about that a lot because, like, there's a lot of I'm like I don't watch a lot of uh, like mainstream like MSNBC or CNN, mm-hmm. but there's like people that I see that um, like there's this guy Dave Rubin or the the Rubin Report, and he's a guy that used to be on the left, but then uh, the Koch brothers came mm. at him and gave him all this money to start his own show. And ever since then, he's been drifting to the right. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people talking about him like, ah, oh, this piece of shit. He's just shilling for corporations and all this. And I'm like, yeah, that's wrong. But I would do the exact same thing if I was in his <laughs> shoes. I would sell out all of my beliefs. Do I'd you think told. he sold out or do you think he actually evolved? Well, I think that he's, I, I think he, well, I think that he sold out. And then he's not. He's also a dumb person. Like okay. if you watch him in, en- <laughs> if you watch him in any interview where it's not softball, you see him completely break down. And I think that because he started talking to people on the right a lot more, that he was when he started. With the room, the last person he talks to is the person he agrees. Basically, with yeah. He, okay. um, yeah. It was actually like one moment was on uh, Rogan. Yeah, Rogan used to be friends with him when he thought that. Uh, Ruben was being like honest in his opinions, but yeah. then once Rogan saw that he was actually like just a grifter, he like stopped associating with him. He like just like cut him off, and like Dave Rubin would be like, "Hey, I gotta be on the pod. Can I be on the pod?" And Rogan would just ignore him because he's yeah. like, "You're not an honest actor. I'm not gonna elevate your voice at all." Gotcha. Yeah. Do you, Do you think um, how much power is too much power? Like, say w- what you just said about Joe Rogan in a sense of like. I'm not going to elevate your voice because he understands how much of a platform, how much his platform uh, elevates a person. Mm -hmm. Um, How much power is too much power? In the hands of one individual? Yes. I don't know. I think that um, 
Well, you have to look at because like we have this idea of like absolute like power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But then like uh, that's sort of the story that we're told in like you know the U.S. like now, and I definitely don't agree with like dictators or emperors and mm-hmm. shit like that. But it's funny when you look at from like a historical standpoint in like ancient Rome, there were these like people that were known as the good emperors because yeah. like yeah they had all the power. But they didn't things were thriving. Yeah, like things were going well. They, you know, some of them weren't great in their personal lives. But yeah. they. I mean, human beings are human beings. Yeah. But, but even with that question that I presented, like my, I've been looking at all these different systems, and I think you know how you fall into a YouTube wormhole or whatever, and you basically like how I end up in this alley of the internet. But here I am. Um, I was going from um, critical race theory, and then I landed into all these different systems of socialism, Marxism, capitalism, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And even going to like dicta- like pure uh, one singular uh, dictator, all these systems can work in in some form of fashion, but giving the people that are in control um, have the best intentions. And now that's where it gets a little shaky when it comes to what group wants to benefit what, because like the the community can thrive right here with this system, but people are going to suffer in some mm-hmm. form of fashion. So it's basically pick your struggle with every system. Mm-hmm. And a lot, yeah, and it's cool because a lot of systems, they'll be basically, like a lot of them are basically an experiment to how much can we change people yeah. to make this thing worse. Like a lot of people talk about like uh, the Spartans was basically let's have a society where your primary being is to be a warrior. You mm-hmm. know, you look at uh, like Imperial Japan where it was like let's make people just love suicide. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, how can you twist the like the actual people mm-hmm. into conforming to this uh, like model that you want to have for society? It's very, it, yeah. Like when you go into those different schools of thoughts, it, it's very interesting when you look at the actual ideology versus how they are in practice. All right. So, quick recap. Both of you guys would like to be the face of the um, <laughs> of the end of the world with, with Terminator bots. Sure. I don't understand why anyone would want to look at my face for more than I don't know thirty seconds at a time. But oh, um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead if you want me to be uh, Hal three thousand. I'm fine with that. I'm definitely. I could I could be the I, I could be the uh, the fucking chick in Blade Runner 2049 have a fucking giant pink hologram of me with my dick out and I'll like give me $25. Honestly I'd do that for free. If you could like if, if a company were to be like hey we're gonna like just like get a video of you naked it's gonna be a hologram on top of like the Empire State Building I'd be like I'll pay you for that opportunity man. That'd be very funny. I'd do that too. Yeah. And you said Andy Kaufman was full of himself. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's funny. So I would uh, honestly like that would be. I mean, like day three, it might be kind of like, all right, yeah. now I'm uh, the the I'm thrill of it is yeah. gone. Yeah, now yeah. everyone's looking at my dick. Right. Yeah. But day one, I'd have like a parade. I'd I'd just be like, hey, look at this shit. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> would like you be actual okay, size? This is so T- TMI. You're naked, right? Yeah. Are I you okay say, right. with you being on flaccid? Like, I was about to say the same like? thing. You want, <laughs> like, you want soft in between right, the like, I, would, I, I would have it flaccid, but I would have a banner um, out front that says grow or not a show. <laughs> okay, okay. So that I can leave it to the imagination for yeah. people. You okay. Know? And that's because that's already big enough to do. People no are going to, like, journalists <laughs> are going to track down women that I've been with and, like, you know, be like, oh, is this, you know what? And there's going to be contradicting stories. That would be, you know what? I think we got a screenplay going. Yeah, I was I think just got, thinking that's that. That's going to be, yeah. Shaved the next uh, Jim Carrey movie. Shaved or unshaved? <laughs> you you going to get a nice little trim up there or you going to leave it bushy? I'm going to, uh, you know what, Let, let's go with trim. I okay. think that, I, I think I can't, e- either extreme is too much for me. You know, <laughs> okay. I'm a, I, so no politically I'm on fate. the left, but uh, <laughs> pubically I'm a moderate. <laughs> but I think that, Not you know, pubically, moderate. Pubically. <laughs> publicly <funny>. and pubically. <laughs> that's well, so me, funny. I'm a, I'll keep a mustache, no no, no beard. That's my, that's my motto. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm, there you go. 
Have it, do any men do any men have landing strips? Have you ever encountered a man? Because I, I feel like women are more, I, I think strip. women are <laughs> more creative with that than men. No, women are definitely more creative. Yeah. Well, but I think they have. Well, to. Well, I feel like yeah, there's not as much to look at. Right. It's kind of like ta da! Like all right. No, I will if. She goes if she's getting to the hair and you want to be considerate, or if you want to get all the pleasure of mm-hmm. her getting to the hair, you will knock some of the hair down. Yeah, I mean I don't because I don't give a shit if they're like let's fucking play, but like but what is funny? Wow, no, this is really I, I can go. I but can like, go what's a funny is when shit. like it's too much and like you just yeah, you when you can't really the, get the job done now. When you start spitting out the hair, it's like no, it's not even much. the spitting out the hair. It's like it's too much. I can't even get to the areas I'm trying to get to because like it's like you know it's, the heat. I feel like I gotta get like a machete, <laughs> like I'm in the jungle and there's vines everywhere, <laughs> like I'm in the new Jumanji movie. Well, well, well if the first time I guess you would say that is the is the is walking through the maze. Once you've been there, you, you feel the heat and you like use muscle memory. I find it, <laughs> I find it annoying. Like, like a metal detector at the beach. Like uh. <laughs> I find it annoying that that's the expectation now. What's that? Being fully shaved? Yes. Um. God, it's so annoying. I don't... I, I, How, like bald or shaved? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the man. Because some men are like, I don't want any hair at all. Like, I've never, I've never, never fucking get with an adult if that's. I mean, the, yeah, I was about to say, I've never said that. Some dudes are too picky, and it honestly bothers me that 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 like that scene that's is your like, no. the, yeah, like women will like assume like a guy wants a certain thing, and I'm like, no, not at all. Who can? I'm oh, asking because if I ain't got to do all that work, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, for me, <laughs> I guess we're gonna go there. I know, right? Yeah, Let's yeah. fucking go there, man. So, so for me, it's we've like, already how talked you about holographic it. dicks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Welcome to the inside of my mind, man. It gets weird. Cirque du Soleil freaking. Hey. <laughs> so for me, it's just basically if if I'm gonna give you head, how how like how enjoyable well, how engaged do you want me to be? Is like how big you leave your bush. Okay. Hmm. That's basically it. <laughs> Like, I mean, I listen, it's like you have a scale, I, like yeah, you're it's like, like walking through grass. Like one of you those, cut uh, the grass what are those like color things that they have at like Home Depot for paint? You're kind of yeah, like, yeah. all right, she's into this. It's like at this level. Bro. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I work out, so I have to shave. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I just hate that it's an expectation on sometimes when you may not have. You had time. Got a chance. About two weeks. Yeah. Like you, but I will say, not shaving keeps me from having sex. That is mm-hmm. like my chastity belt mm-hmm. because I'm what? not gonna give it up if it has hair on it. <laughs> All right, is that is that for new dudes or like a guy that you already have? That's like new dudes. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. for sure, definitely new dudes. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. And even, about if, even if they're like, it's cool, in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, it's not. So. You still want to be your best self. Right. And yeah. I don't feel like that's All being right. my best self in those moments. How many times have you given it up when your bra and panty didn't match? <laughs> This is a question I mean, for me. Both. Okay. Um, <laughs> I definitely. I guess we well, chess here for men, right? Yeah. First of all, I actually. Uh, well, this is a more interesting conversation. But in uh, well, what you I mean, what you guys are talking about is a more interesting conversation. But when I was in quarantine, before I lost my mind, I well, I guess this was probably a sign that I was starting to lose my mind. I just shaved my entire body. And like trying I will to, say, trying to like, get more aerodynamic. Well, about? well, no. Like I was just like out of the like I was just out of nowhere. I was like. Should I just like sh- I like texted a friend? Should I just shave my entire body? And she was like, "Go for it." And I was like, "All right." And then I did it. And by the way, I will. Why say, would she have said no though? Like, where? I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Don't you want to be just manly? For pictures? Uh, well, like I will say, shaving your legs is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Mm, like having to get well, behind the knee too. and like down here, I thought oh, it was just like, you did, yeah. like yeah, I had to like. Well, you're a, a lot more hairier. hairier. I am a have, very have hairy you, man. You shaved a um, a, your, a girlfriend or a woman before. Sh- shaved another person? No. I, you should try that. Yeah. It sounds... I, it's, it's, it does sound It's a kinky. level of trust. It is a yeah. level of trust. Oh, yeah. But, like, it's man to sensual. man, I would say we... Uh, you you would naturally appreciate the effort that women do more. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to Brown Panties, I need that I need mm-hmm. that answer. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about why we're here today. Right. Right. Most of the time, <laughs> I know that I'm going to give it up. So uh-huh. I will wear... <laughs> Uh, matching bra and panties. It's seriously. And then. So, so uh, how many times have you not? You're like, damn, how do you even talk me into this? Honestly, at that point, 
That's the least of my worries. I'm giving them my vagina, and I'm worried about whether or not my bra and panties are matching. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I really feel like we have a weird... Like, okay, Ooh, for, ex- okay. for example, oh, go. for Let's example, go. You, I'm a to. man could probably get coochie from me before he would get my Netflix password. And that, my friends... It's screwed up. I love how it's like the we're about to possibly accidentally create a person. Right. But, but you can't but have my that's real. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. That's real. Okay, no, what about man. you guys? What about you guys? Like, if it's not a person that you necessarily care about or it's not um, a certain level of intimacy, right? Um, you have sex, but you won't kiss. I don't believe I've that. never had that. Yeah. Though. Really? Get that out of here. I don't I've know, but that's the that. thing with some people. Yeah, I know it's the thing. I know. I, I think I saw something. There's a porn star that like says like she doesn't kiss in her scenes like, mm-hmm. because well, she saves work. that for her husband. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's at work. <laughs> no, that's like, that's like uh, no, that's like um, that's like I guess like the Brazilian women they do all anal stuff because they're saving their vaginas for their husbands. Hmm. That's not just a Brazilian thing. That's a Christian thing. Yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. okay. uh, but I used to teach sexual health, and that was definitely a misconception among the teenagers. I knew girls that would give head, I'll but give they head, wouldn't have sex. I'll do anal, mm-hmm. but I won't give up vagina because uh, that's keep my V card. For I do I not like miss marriage. that age when you have no idea what's going. All you know is you want to be there, yeah. but you have no idea what it is, how it works. You're like, do it like you. That's like that shit. That was scary. Like sex was scary for a while. <laughs> Where you're just Scary? like, I don't, well, like. Well, yeah, no, I'm thinking now. I'm doing, well, self, think, I'm doing, I'm doing self-inventory. Who, yeah, think back to who you were when you were like, think about your first time. And you were like excited, but you were also kind of like, all right, how do I, like. I was like, uncertain. Uh, did y'all have like, a lot, did y'all watch a lot of porn? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Even then? Yeah. How then, you, yeah. How did you I, get I watched, to it? I watched more porn then than I do now. How did you get, how did you access it? I view porn Parents as like a friend from my brother. Okay. Well, I was, I'm a, a millennial, like, I, I'm 27, so I just had the internet. internet. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm 34, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah. Not that we didn't have access to it, but it wasn't, we didn't, mm-hmm. I'm in a weird generation because I've, I've experienced not having a cell phone versus the changes that have happened in the last 30 years, or even 15 mm-hmm. years, to be yeah. honest. Um, but porn wasn't as accessible, so I guess my point in asking that question is, my first time, I didn't really have a lot of examples of what should happen. Well, that's a bad example is within itself. And now I think porn, and there's been a lot of studies on that too, where mm. people basically generate their sexual ideas of what's... Right, what, from what, porn. Like Which the, is the bad. Performing, they're performing yeah. versus the actual intimacy of what mm-hmm, the moment's mm-hmm. supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it was a good thing I hadn't seen it. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. I, po- yeah. It dep- oh, I guess it depends on your partner as well. Because... Mm-hmm. Are are even okay? So I I put it like this. So, um, me being in a relationship for six years and then I became single down here. Mm -hmm. I thought I was a freak until I started dating in this. I wouldn't just call it Atlanta, but I just say just being single Mm -hmm. and dating and understanding what other people doing. And then like when you start interacting with people that interact that have multiple sexual partners and they have all these different energies and different things that they do. Experiences, right? I thought I was a freak. It was like, no, I just you have, have a, high a regular sex. ass sex. No, I just yeah. compared I have a, to other people. See, yeah, I yeah. thought I was a freak, but it's just I have a high sex drive. Whereas other people, they, mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like they. Some people they kind of do what we people call the kinks, and then they like mm-hmm. ramp things up for the adrenaline rush because they've been desensitized by something um, because they've had too much of one thing. I thought I don't it was, know if it's yeah. decent. I don't know if you well, get well, desensitized because like, I read something the other day that said if you have a kink. Mm-hmm. Most likely, your pa- one of your parents or both had that same exact kink. You think like so? It, I re- it said it was a study. Like genetically, they said you have the same kink as your parent. I never. I could probably have talked to my dad about that. Thinking man, about taking inventory of my own shit. Good for them. <laughs> good for them. <laughs> that's, that's you know right? what? Good for you guys. And I, I did have a thought. Like, does my mom like to be <laughs> controlled? <laughs> That's it's weird. possible, but also there's a the study I saw was we kind of develop our love languages and our love styles based on what we did have or yeah. we didn't have as children. Well, what's it? Well, like, but like, if just to backtrack for that, like, think about the shit that you've been with, like pe- some some of the shit people are into. Yeah, and you're like, oh, their parents were probably into that. Like, I thought, like you say, like you thought, I thought I was a freak till I got to college. 
and a chick told me she wanted me to pretend that she was a dead body. And then I was like, all right, I'm out. I'll see you guys later. Like, nope. Not I gonna. mean, that's a starfish, though. It's like beyond what? that. Huh? It's no. Like beyond she, a starfish? No, I think she starfish. meant like. No, she I'm meant dead, like she I'm wanted to. She said she wanted to pretend to be a corpse. And I was like, yeah, no, not even. Shit. Yeah. Okay. I was like, not so she, like. Oh, so um, I have follow up questions. I'm so sure you she, did. So I she, did as she well. was going to be quiet and just basically in non like non responsive. Uh, try to be non responsive. Well, basically, what she well and now that, I, now that I think about it, she may have just been lazy. That's what I'm saying. And it was starfish. like, you, okay, you know what my kink is? You do everything. <laughs> but that's a joke. <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to yeah, cut this out of the podcast. I like how you're always writing. <laughs> no, always, always. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's a premise, right? Right. It's funny but, the life of a comedian. Like you're always writing. People, yeah. Like I'm always like I'll have any thought, and I'm like, is that a thing? Yeah. No. And then you move on with your day, but yeah, yeah. like it's just constant. I always put the notes in my phone. I don't care how mundane it is. Mm-hmm. I'm like, because you I, never know when it comes. You back. never know, bro. Mm-hmm. For real. And that in those moments, because it's hard for me to come up with jokes that are like everyday relatable stuff because mm-hmm. my mind is very deep. So I'm always coming up with these deep concepts. Mm-hmm. So in those moments, I'm coming up with relatable stuff because mm-hmm. it just so happened to be regular shit that I'm talking about. Right. So it helps me in that department, even if I don't use it. Yeah. It might give me a thought. Also, just like, um, just like writing down your thoughts makes it easier to process them. Cause mm-hmm. like, for sure. I mean, your thoughts never stop. Like you're always like constantly. So it's just a monk, like just a mess. You're basically juggling like a thousand different thoughts at once. So like, that's why I like you know like they like a lot of like therapists and shit like will recommend like journaling because it's like all right, get it to where Organizing it's in. It, like yeah. yeah, like get it to where it's actually out. Like I was like I, I was venting to a friend today about something that like I hadn't really talked to anyone about, but like that was bothering me. And then, like, once I, like, actually, like, told it to them, I was like, oh, I'm just crazy. This is, this is nothing. Like, mm. I was, like, in my head, like, I've been, like, walking around being, like, this is, like, bothering me. Like, this is bothering the fuck out of me because of this, that, and the other thing. And then, like, when I actually, like, wrote it out to say to a friend, I was like, oh, this is nothing. Like, I was Journaling like, oh, this is nothing. helped me to realize my repeated cycles. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because the yes. stories were exactly the same, but just different names. It was mm-hmm. like a mad lip of, of heartbreak. So yeah. I was well, like, that- I have a problem. Don't miss. He's spitting.